Have you ever needed to make a toggleable switch for a project in Scratch, like for a menu or button? Well today I'm going to show you how to do that and more. This is an example of a switch. It changes between two states, and it uses a complicated script like this when there's a way to do this in only a few blocks. You can delete this, have your variable set to zero, then do a when this sprite clicked, change the variable by one, if else, and do the variable mod2 equals one. The mod block finds the remainder of the variable. For even numbers, it gives you a zero, but for odd numbers, it gives you a one. So if it equals one, then we can say one thing. If it says zero, we can say something else. So let's have a look. So instead of 20 blocks, we cut it in half and it's now 10. This next hack is for all you animators out there. Normally, to switch to a previous costume, you would have to switch costume to costume number minus one. Now you may already know this if you've seen my cursed blocks video, but there is actually a secret block, switch costume to previous costume. Now the way I showed it in that video was actually just overly complicated. I went to a completely different project and backpacked the block, but there were also a lot of comments telling me that instead I can just name a costume, previous costume, then switch costume to previous costume, then I delete the previous costume costume, and then I still have the block and it works. So we'll just demonstrate this by having a few sprites. And as you can see, they move backwards. You can also do this with next costume, just costume name next costume, but I don't know why you'd do that when there's a next costume block already. This last hack is how to make a one stop sign clicked block. So if you don't know, Scratch doesn't have a block like the green flag for the stop sign, but there is actually a way to code it in. What you're going to want to do is do one green flag clicked, you are going to make a timer variable forever set timer to the timer in the sensing category. So you might be wondering, won't it just always be the same? Well, no, because they actually do behave differently. Variables can't update after the project is stopped, but the timer does. So then we're going to get a when timer is greater than the timer variable. Then we're just going to have what do we want it to do, which I'm just going to do next costume. And you can put this in a forever, but then if you do use a forever, then just put this in the same forever set timer to timer. Now, when we press the stop sign, it does whatever we told it to. This could be used in many different ways. The scratcher Chipmunk uses this very well in his project. He makes it so that whenever you stop the project, it shows new text. So let me know what you use this for and leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and comment. I will see you later.